I had the pleasure of um, spending some time this morning with your best all-time recruit, which is your wife, Lupe. Um, we were talking about Mateen Cleaves, and she said to me something real interesting. She said that Mateen taught you as much as you taught him, and maybe that was the case more with any other player that you've coached. So what did Mateen Cleaves teach you? Well, you got to remember, I'm from Iron Mountain, Michigan. You know, um, I, I never played against a minority player until I got to college. Um, you know, I thought he, he always thought of me as the white guy from the where it snows a lot, and <laughs> I always thought of him as the inner city guy, you know, and, and, and it was amazing because after a year of fist fighting and we got on the same page, um, you know, the relationship, uh, you, you know my son's named after him kind of, and his is named after me now. And, uh, you know, he just taught me on, on what I realized after him, it doesn't matter if you're white or black, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, it doesn't matter where you're from, if you have common goals, and we had a common goal. You know, I recruited him. It was the Fab Five. A couple of years out of the Fab Five, everything was Michigan in the Fab Five. And to get him here was was hard. And and then, you know, talked about a dream of winning a national championship. And to think him and I got to live our dreams, how many people get to live their dreams? It's almost unbelievable, you know, and he could have come out as a junior and, and like Magic here, I think Magic was a good, in, good influence on him. He hadn't won a national championship here and that's what he came to do. And he stayed to win a national championship and that doesn't happen nowadays. I could have gone to the NBA. That's not the same as going, but thank God I worked for some people that gave me that opportunity to look. I know you've had offers to go elsewhere. Uh, you've turned down more money than most people will ever see in their lifetime, so it makes me question you from time to time. But um, Me and too. I, <laughs> I'm sure. And, and I know most of them haven't gotten public, but obviously the most public situation you were involved in was uh, with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Was there ever a moment during that process where you really thought, I think I'm going to do this? You know, it was the closest of any of the different jobs, college or pro, that I've had an opportunity to be involved in. And, you know, even though Dan Gilbert's a Michigan State guy, I'd only met Dan one time. But I was down in Detroit at a uh, grand opening of a hotel of a friend of mine, and my wife and I were there. And, and there was, you know, different people there. And I got this call out of the clear blue and whether I'd have an interest. And, you know, I really... I really didn't know anything, and, I, and, he, and he called back, and he said, where are you? And I said, I'm in Detroit. And he said, well, why don't you come over to Dan's house and talk to him? And I called my AD, you know, and just told him what I was doing, and, and I got over there, and this guy is so incredibly motivating. I mean, you know, what he's doing in downtown Detroit with Quicken Loans, what he's done with everything is off the charts. And I sat there with my wife at 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night as he paced in front of us in a pair of jeans and work boots and a T-shirt. And, I mean, he almost had me right then because I just felt like, wow, this guy wants to win a championship. Um, he's going to do what he can do. And uh, that's what made it hard, you know. And, and I did think about it. And thank God my president here and my AD here were so supportive. They gave me a chance to really look at something that was not only an incredible amount of money, but it was still in the Midwest. And um, for a guy that I think someday I'd like to work for in different capacity maybe. But uh, And, of course, the big question was whether or not LeBron yeah. was going to resign and end up that he did not. If LeBron was coming back, to you the know, Cavs. It, it, it had something to do with it, but at the time we didn't know, and uh, I wasn't basing my thoughts either way on that. Now, maybe if he was already there, you would have said, wow, you know, what a chance of a lifetime to coach one of the greatest players that ever played. But, uh, you know, we got one here in Magic, so that would have been okay. But uh, would it have made a difference? I don't think so, because I made it for other reasons. It's I interesting. I always assume that if LeBron came back, it was... You know, to me, it's, it would be, it would almost be coaching malpractice if you have a chance to coach LeBron James and yeah, you turn that down. Yeah, and, and you're probably right, but since we didn't go through that scenario, 
I don't know how I would have reacted, but I never regretted it, Seth. I, you know, that's the good news. I, I don't sit here. I mean, once in a while when you lose a big recruit, you say, God, I wish. <laughs> or once in a while when you deal with problems that you don't have to deal with there. But then again, I'm sure they have problems that I don't have.